Well, welcome to The Daily Climate Show. Coming up... US Supreme Court rules against regulating carbon emissions from power plants. A scientific review out today is set to guide the government on the future of fracking. The first hydrogen truck to be mass-produced in the UK is unveiled. And rich nations are not delivering on climate cash promises. That's according to the former Prime Minister, Gordon Brown. Hello and welcome to The Daily Climate Show, where we track the changes happening to our planet, hear from those hit hardest by those changes and report on the race for solutions. Now, in the last hour, the US Supreme Court has ruled that the Environmental Protection Agency won't have the authority to regulate carbon emissions from power plants. Now, energy companies brought the case in an attempt to limit regulation through the US government's Clean Air Act. Now, the ruling will make it much harder for the Biden administration to stick to its climate goals, while science and technology editor Tom Clark is with us now. So, Tom, can you just tell us how big this is? I mean, it's quite a remarkable ruling, considering around the world lots of governments are implementing rules to restrict carbon dioxide emissions from things like power generation. This one applies to greenhouse gas emissions from... America's electricity generating network. And what this does is effectively remove the US federal government's ability to do that, because the only tool that uh, the Biden administration really has in order to restrict pollution from power plants um, is to use the EPA, the environmental regulator, to do it. And that's because every time a US administration has tried to pass laws through Congress to reduce emissions in the country, they've got held up in Congress by Conservative lawmakers. So the Obama administration hatched a plan to use the EPA to use the Clean Air Act, which is the, 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 the rules that the EPA enforces on, on polluting companies, to reduce carbon dioxide emissions that way. And what the Supreme Court decided today is that that is an overreach of the Environmental Protection Agency's uh, powers. It's regulatory overreach and it has to effectively get back on it, get back, its, get back in its box, control pollution from power plants, but carbon dioxide is not a harmful gas, it's not toxic, therefore it can't be regulated by the EPA at a federal level. So it's a big setback and it leaves the, the, um, the Biden administration few options in terms of a nationwide plan to reduce emissions. However, it's not the death knell for progress on limiting emissions in the US for two important reasons. One, emissions from coal power, pl power plants have been falling year on year um, for, for, for many years now, and that's because it's now cheaper to build renewable energy than coal. That trend's happening anyway. And also, individual US states still have the power to implement clean air plans. And there are 21 states in the US, don't forget, which have already passed net zero legislation, meaning they'll hit net zero emissions, hopefully, by 2050. So it could turn out to be rather a pyrrhic victory for the Conservatives, but nonetheless a key tool removed from the Biden administration. Tom, thank you very much. Uh, well, let's get some of the day's other climate news now, because the UK is getting its first hydrogen electric lorry. Now, a heavy goods vehicle is being launched by Teva and will be the first of its kind to be manufactured right here in the UK. Now, hydrogen is a renewable energy that emits only water when burned and will be used to top up the electric on batteries and uh, that will allow them to travel further and carry heavier loads. Now, Teva Chief Executive Ash Bennett told Sky News that getting electric vehicles to drive longer routes will lead to economic and environmental savings. The savings in the world of electric vehicles is every mile you drive is so much cheaper than driving that original diesel truck. If because of the limitations of battery you're not going to drive long distances, you're just not driving enough cheap miles to justify the higher capex of an electric truck. So it's about driving more and more. By the way, that's the whole point. We want to replace all those miles driven by diesel trucks, not the short routes, but the longer routes. So it's good for the economics, it's good for the air we breathe, it's good for the planet. About half of head teachers in England are planning to teach climate change in schools, according to media learning com company Pearson's. Uh, more than six in ten heads say they'll be taking steps to make their schools more sustainable and eco-friendly over the next two years. Now, a quarter of teachers say they've noticed students becoming more anxious about climate change in the last year. 
Now, the British Geological Survey are due to submit their review into fracking later today. The report is set to provide ministers with the latest evidence on whether to proceed with fracking for shale gas in the UK. Now, the process of fracking involves drilling underground into rocks in order to release gas, and it seems controversial, and was suspended, actually, in the UK in uh, 2019 after drilling caused a series of earthquakes that the government says it will uh, be led by science and it wants all possible energy sources on the table in the face of the global energy crisis. Our climate change and energy correspondent Hannah Thomas-Peter joins us now. So, Hannah, just give us a sense about why this is so controversial. Well, because it's a fossil fuel, bluntly. That's mm. the overarching argument, that we are in the middle of a green energy transition. And uh, critics of fracking say that quite apart from causing earthquakes, we don't really know exactly how much recoverable gas is down there. It's not going to make a difference to the price UK consumers pay for gas, and we simply shouldn't be locking in long-term fossil fuel infrastructure when we should instead be concentrating on accelerating investment in renewables. But then there are supporters of fracking, and they are a loud bunch. A lot of them are on the Conservative backbenches, and they say, we're in an energy crisis. If we have gas under our feet, and we are going to need gas by any estimate for the next 10, 20 maybe years, maybe even longer than that, why would we be importing it from the likes of Qatar, Saudi Arabia, America, or we could be getting it from our own soil and benefiting from all the tax revenues and jobs that come along with that. Mm. Uh, whatever the arguments, the government has decided to ask the British Geological Survey for a review on the matter, specifically on that issue of earthquakes. That review is due any moment now. And then the government's going to have to decide whether or not it gives this very controversial industry another chance. Now, I've been speaking to a leading geologist who helped advise the government on fracking the first time the industry mm. was emerging. And this is what he had to say about what should be done. The government's ordered a review into fracking. Yes three years after they essentially stopped it. Yes. Is that a reasonable thing to do in your view? I think it is, yes. It, it, may, not, it may not work out that it's a, it, it, it's a plausible source of energy, but um, we have a lot more data. We can look elsewhere. I think we should, we should try to understand it. We should always try to understand these things. And the more time we spend understanding the data and actually having hard fact, the better it is, rather than just having supposition and uh, decisions made on political grounds. Is there any new technology which could help us to frack more safely or to monitor fracking? Well, the, 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 the equipment increases with all the time. It gets better and better. We have more and more computer powers. We can have a network of seismometers. We can image the stress effectively as it's changing. That's what you can do, right? We have, we have ways of doing that. I guess even in, the, in the nearly 10 years, not quite 10 years, uh, all of that's developed. Um, our understanding is a little bit better. And to be honest, a lot of people came along after me and carried on working on this. Uh, and, of course, we can look to other countries, you know, despite the geology being different, we can try to understand the process and how rocks are affected by it. I, 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 yes, I think, we, I think we could have another go, but I don't know if we will.